Okay, welcome in. Brian Edwards, MajorWager.com, coming to you on July 30th from Palace Stations Casino, room 318 to be exact. Um, we are talking Virginia Cavaliers. So I was over the Beau Rivage here in Biloxi today. And now there are some books that still have Virginia's uh, win total at seven and a half. And I think there are actually some that maybe maybe even had it at seven with heavy juice to the over uh, earlier this summer. But right now over at the Beau Rivage, uh, which is an MGM resort property, um, you can get Virginia over eight at plus 135. And I like that. Why do I like that? Couple of main reasons. Uh, A, the schedule out of the other side, obviously, which has Clemson. And really outside of Clemson, and here, here's the, um, <laughs> I'll show you the conference odds, which, you know, lay it out. It's basically Clemson and nobody in this conference. All right, this is from the Beau Rivage. Clemson minus 800. I, I've never even heard of that. I mean, even in these dominant Saban years, obviously the SEC pack compared to the ACC, but even in these dominant Saban years, Alabama's never even been minus 400 to win the SEC. Clemson's minus 800, and it's justified. Miami's 10 to 1. Virginia's 12 to 1. So by these odds, Virginia's the third best team in the ACC. And then Vitek, 15 to 1. FSU, 18 to 1. The Q's 30 to 1. NC State, 50 to 1. So on and so forth. We're going to talk the Who's, as in the Wahoos, not those other scrub squads. Okay. The other reason, or two other reasons, Bronco Mendenhall and Bryce Perkins. If there's anything I value in handicapping, it's quarterback play and head coaching. Um, and then in a season win total, the schedule. At Pittsburgh in the opener, Virginia is a favorite right now, minus three at most books. Then they've got Bill and Mary at home. William and Mary, I call them Bill and You call them William and Mary, I call them Bill and Mary. Um, FSU at home, that's the other game from the other side of the conference. ODU at home, Old Dominion, at Notre Dame, and then a bye week, and then at Miami. Those are the only two games where they're definitive underdogs. And in the Miami game, Virginia gets two weeks to prepare. Miami doesn't. And that's even more important because it's a Friday night game. So it's a short week for Miami, and it's a long open date for the Who's to prepare. So I don't rule out a W down there. Duke at home, the other game out of the other side at Louisville, then at North Carolina. I mean, those are winnable. Both those teams went 2-10 and ten last year, right? Let me check. Pretty sure. Final standings. Louisville two and ten. Carolina two and nine. That's right. They got that uh the uh, hurricane game with UCF got canceled. So, oh, back to my Virginia page. It's been a long day. I'm not functioning all, all cylinders at the moment. <laughs> okay. Um, get Louisville at UNC back to back. They should win those. Georgia Tech at home, then Liberty at home, and then Virginia Tech at home. On a short week, advantageous to the home team. Virginia's got it at home. All right, Virginia last year, eight and five straight up, nine and four against the spread, but they lost two games in overtime uh, at Georgia Tech and at Vatech in back to back weeks. And they lost by four at Indiana, but covered as a five point underdog. So, I mean, they could have been a 10-win team last year. All right, they bring back eight starters on defense, six starters on offense. That defense, 20.1 points per game. Their DBs are ranked by Phil Steele in his national unit rankings, number 17 in the nation. Their linebackers are ranked 24th in the country by Steele's preseason mag. <clears throat> Offensively. Bryce Perkins, man. Bryce, Bryce Perkins. Started his career at Arizona State. 1,189 rushing yards. 
and nine touchdowns before sack yardage was counted in. Even with sack yardage, 923 yards on the ground, completed 64.5% of his passes, 2,680, 2,680 yards, 25 to 9 TDINT ratio. He's got his second, third, and fourth uh, best receivers coming back. He was third team all ACC last year. He'll be second team this year, probably, behind, uh, obviously, Trevor. Am I forgetting anybody? No. He'll be second team, ahead of Ryan Willis, ahead of James Blackman and or Alex Hornibrook, for sure. Um, yeah, over eight. I mean, I've got him marked eight and two with two swing games. The two swing games being FSU at home and at Pitt. Even if they lose both, we're looking at a push. And some of you might be able to get the, you know, seven and a half, which is still out there at some spots. So that's why I like the Virginia Cavaliers. Easy schedule, Bronco Mendenhall, Bryce Perkins. And again, could have won 10 games last year. Um, net yardage last year, plus 706. <clears throat> they were plus two in turnover margin, but nothing crazy. So they weren't getting extremely lucky. I mean, I would say you lose two overtime games. <clears throat> excuse me. You got extremely unlucky. So the Cavs, the Wahoos, the Fighting Christian Alexanders, old friend, UVA alum. That's what I like. The over, whether it's seven and a half or eight at plus money, I think they go nine and three, maybe even ten and two, and probably win this side of the ACC and go to their first ACC championship game. Clearly, I'm not that high on Miami. Now, obviously, they play at Miami. Miami would have the head-to-head, -head, but Miami's going to lose a lot of games. This ACC is so wide open to see who the second-best team is. It might be Virginia. Take their season win total over. I'm Brian Edwards of MajorWager.com. Coming from my room at the Palace Station in Biloxi, Mississippi. I hope the light's okay in here. Over now.